Okay, thank you very much. I, let me thank the organizers for inviting me to give a talk. And I will talk about some uh, spectral problems on folated manifolds, uh, which are related with non-commutative geometry and uh, where non-commutative geometry plays some role and probably it will help somehow and there are some open problems so let me just so these problems are related with so-called adiabatic limits uh, and let me first uh, say what does it mean so suppose we have a smooth compact Riemannian manifold and uh, we have a foliation on this manifold so uh, which means that we on a manifold we have a division of this manifold into the union of uh, in non-intersecting uh, immersed sub-manifold which locally looks very simple but globally it has a complicated uh, structure so usually we will I will denote local coordinates in this way so the leaves of the foliations of the foliation are given by this equation so we have a foliation then we have such a st structure su such a direct direct sum structure at the infinitesimal level so we can so we have vectors which are tangent to the leaves and I denote it by f the tangent space of these vectors ta tangent space of uh, to the foliation and orthogonal complement to this so that's what we have here so we have such a direct sum decomposition into uh, tangential part and transverse part and then we can decompose the metric in into the sum of these two components it's a sort of Pythagoras theorem and now we take and we so now what we do we take epsilon and we put large parameter before the transverse part of the metric which means that uh, with respect to this metric the, the distance between uh, any two leaves uh, is getting larger and larger so at the limit we get a disjoint union of the leaves, uh, of the leaves and usu usually, for, uh, usually this is called uh, the adiabatic limit and which is, which this name goes from uh, Witten in this uh, uh, context and actually the uh, adiabatic you know goes from thermodynamics and which means that uh, the leaves are getting more uh, uh, thermally isolated which really corresponds to what happens here okay and adiabatic, so adiabatic me, uh, limit means that we take the, li, uh, roughly speaking, means that we take the limit epsilon goes to zero. Okay, but more specifically, we will consider the Laplace Beltrami operator associated with this uh, family of Riemannian metrics. So we have a family of second order elliptic differential operator on a compact manifold which depends on a small parameter epsilon so we have an countably many uh, so we have uh, countably many eigenvalues corresponding to uh, a complete orthogonal system of eigenfunctions so we have lab lambdas here starting from zero for simplicity I will talk only about uh, Laplace Beltrami operator but we will co also can consider uh, Laplace operator on differential forms and uh, I'm going to discuss the asymptotic behavior of eigenvalue distribution function so I just fix certain level lambda 
and I consider the number of eigenvalues which less than lambda. When epsilon goes to zero, as we will see a little bit later, so we have a sort of accumulation of eigenvalues, so this number grows, and we are interested in asymptotical behavior of this number when epsilon goes to zero. Or more generally, I can consider any function of the operator and consider the trace of this function, which is just, again, a sort of uh, the sum of, so this is a smoothed version of this, or maybe not smoothed version of this uh, quantity. Uh, no. <laughs> That's what I'm going to explain. It is sort of, well, non-commutative volume in general. <laughs> but uh, many people believe that this is a volume. It's not the volume. We have two asymptotics. One is for lambda getting big and one is for epsilon getting small. Yeah, I fixed lambda. <laughs> Okay, so let's consider for, a simplest, for the simplest example. Let's consider just uh, two-dimensional torus, R2 over Z, Z2. Let's consider just a simple, just the Euclidean metric. And the leaves are given by so-called Kronecker foliation, so we just have parallel lines with the same slope. What happens in this case? Well, in this case, we have, here we have, uh, so, uh, tangent vectors and uh, orthogonal vectors in this form. So, th this is the family of metrics, matrix. When epsilon goes to zero, we have here, uh, uh, yes, we have here a growing term. But in the corresponding Laplacian, we, get a, we have the inverse matrix in the Laplacian, so we have a, uh, so we have, what do we have here? We have, uh, okay, we have here a sort of Liefeis Laplacian, which has no parameter, plus uh, a transverse Laplacian, which goes with a small parameter, and when epsilon goes to zero, this family of elliptic operators degenerates to a Liefeis elliptic operator. What do we have for eigenvalues? So, well, we have a, a second order differential operator with constant coefficients, so we can say uh, just immediately that we have a complete orthogonal system of eigenvalues which is given by exponents. And the corresponding uh, family of eigenfunctions given by this formula. And we see that we have, a, uh, if alpha is irrational, we have accumulation. So if we look just for the, so if we forgot this contribution, which, so put epsilon equals zero, it's easy to see that really this set is dense. So in the limit, we have just positive, uh, positive uh, real semi-axis as a limit for the spectrum. And this is the spectrum of the Liefeis Laplacian. And what do we have? Uh, uh, and we see that in this case we arrive at some problem in uh, maybe number theory. So we have a, s we should take as the circle or the disk. And then we have just here F, H, and then uh, we, ha we, we have a family of ellipses. Here we have the same semi-axis, but here this family is stretch away. And uh, it turns out that the answer depends on uh, whether alpha is rational or irrational. And uh, this is, uh, it's a bit surprising that such a formula for, uh, for the number of uh, integer points in, in this family of uh, ellipses uh, was unknown. And uh, let me show what do we have. 
So actually, for alpha ir irrational, we do have volume. So we have a sort of mixing or ergodicity when alpha is irrational. And uh, so in this particular case, we, this was computed by my PhD student, Andrei Yakovlev, but it's a consequence of a general formula, which I'm going to explain a little bit later for, for arbitrary uh, fully Riemannian foliations. But what do we have for alpha is rational? It's really not volume. It's uh, actually the sum of one dimensional volumes. So actually what should we do? We should divide this segment into the sum of, uh, with a certain step. You can see the step is here. So like this, one over p squared plus q squared uh, with some Yes, with some multi, well, not one, okay, we will, you will see. And we take uh, rectangles, and that's what we get. So we, we have a, a sort of, uh, uh, so here we have, so this is the sum, this the sum of areas of these rectangles, uh, which means that this is, uh, this would rather uh, the sum of one-dimensional one volume, or as you can say, it's a sort of discrete volume in some sense. Okay, and so we, we, we see that we have two different formulas depending on alpha is rational or irrational, and now let me explain, how, but it's really, one formula, and uh, to explain this formula, I will use non-commutative geometry. So it, it turns out that in both cases, we have a sort of non-commutative volume, but with different kind of foliations, with different behaviors. And, uh, but first of all, let me just go far away from foliations, just let me just remind you what is this semi-classical valve formula. So suppose we have a, yeah, it's, so suppose we have a compact manifold for simplicity and we have the Schrodinger operator with the potential and with H being semi-classical parameter which is small, which is supposed to be small. And we are in, again, we have a family of uh, elliptic operators depending on a small parameter, on the small parameter h. And we have again accumulation of eigenvalues. And uh, we are interested in, uh, well, like here in the asymptotic of the trace, so we take any function of this. And uh, we are looking for this. What should we do? So in quantum mechanics, sometimes it's called Bohr principle, correspondence principle. And uh, so we have here some quantum volume. And uh, one can say that to each, uh, to, the uni to each unit of quantum volume, we have certain amount of classical volume in, phase, in the phase space. And to, so, and to formulate this, we have to consider, so this is a quantum Hamiltonian. We have to uh, consider the corresponding uh, classical Hamiltonian, which is given in this way. And this is the formula. Why do I need this? When h goes to zero again. Uh, okay, let's consider our operator we have here we see that here we have epsilon, small parameter before this. So this looks like small parameter multiplied by transverse part of the operator. But transverse part of the operator, this is a sort of uh, Laplacian uh, La on the leaf space. And this is leaf ice operator. And from the point of non-commutative geometry, the family of operators along leaves. It's, a sort of, it's not an operator in cyste algebra, but it's an operator affiliated with the cyste algebra because it's a sort of unbounded potential. So we do have a sort of Schrodinger operator here. 
and uh, on the leaf space. And what's interesting to see that now I will try to use the language of non-commutative geometry, uh, writing a sort of vial formula as I had before in this setting. And it turns out that this gives me precisely what I have in both these cases. You can't use this for the proof, but to write this very nice, it's, uh, it's useful and probably it gives some insights to further study of this problem. Okay, so let's start. First of all, I have a foliation. I should uh, consider the sort of phase space of this foliation, so the cotangent bundle of the foliation. What should I do? I actually, If I look at the local picture, I have x, uh, x and y here. I should, uh, so I have dual coordinates, psi and eta, cotangent coordinates. But I don't need this. I only this need this. And I, uh, after this, I have to forget about y. So how to introduce this eta? This is simple. I just, uh, I don't, uh, yes, I should consider so-called conomal bundle, which means that I should consider covectors which vanish at the tangent leaf, tangent uh, bundle of the foliation. And in this case, I just add this piece P2. Then, actually, on this, uh, so on this conomal bundle, we have so-called lifted foliation, which is given in our local case just by, ta by uh, taking a, a, a y and eta constant. And then I go to the quotient. So how can I forget, forget it? So I, I, to forget x means that I have to consider the space of leaves of this foliation of this foliation. So, okay, so here I have a lifted foliation which is given in this way. So I have slope here. We again have a sort of Kronecker foliation but on this, uh, on this object. But now we play with, so we, we have to go to the leaf space of this lifted foliation and this is going to be the sort of uh, cotangent bundle to the leaf space. And what should I do with this? How to write the principal symbol? Uh, okay, instead of this, I just write p squared, like I did, like I did here. Instead of Laplacian, h times Laplacian, I write psi squared. So I do the, the same game here. And what I, do I get? I should get a function on the leaf space, but now it's, no, it's a function in the sense of non-commutative geometry, which means that this is a, a second order leaf phi's differential operator. Differential operator means that so, which means that it's a, an unbounded function. Okay. And this is a definition, so this is a semi-classical symbol. So now I have to take a function of this. Okay, I, c I can do this. Sorry? Epsilon is here. Ah, you mean here? Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> Actually, there is no epsilon here, but it's a sort of... It's It's independent of epsilon, actually, yeah. Maybe it's not a good notation, but it's, it's, it's a matter of notation. <laughs> Sorry. So it's independent of epsilon. It's a sort of uh, principal symbol of the operator. Okay, now for simplicity, first of all, let me consider alpha is irrational. Then uh, I say that 
this operator, this is a second order Lie-Feist uh, tangentially elliptic operator. It's affiliated with the sister algebra of foliation, which means that, so sister algebra roughly means that it consists of, uh, the, of smooth, fa not smooth, continuous families. First of all, we should st start with smooth families of Lie-Feist uh, uh, smoothing operators. And then to complete somehow uh, to get Sista or von Neumann. But here I just need, to, so, so we have a family of operators along the leaves. And we take, uh, say, take exponential of or any function of uh, our symbol. And if you get, so for the symbol we have a, a second order elliptic operator along the leaf. If we take any function of this operator, we have a family of smooth, Lie-Phi smoothing operators along the leaves. So it's precisely the element of sister algebra of the foliation. So from uh, at the on the language of at the language of non-commutative geometry of Allen Cohn is just a function of the leaf space of our lifted foliation. And we are done. We defined a certain function on the face space associated with this foliation with this. Uh, uh, foliation and uh, then we have to integrate and uh, one can see that actually uh, for uh, in, in transverse direction we have a sort of cotangent bundle of the uh, cotangent uh, bundle of uh, uh, the local transversal which means that we know that this local cotangent bundle has a, a natural symplectic structure and it's easy to see that this symplectic structure is invariant so we have a natural holonomy invariant measure which is given just by this uh, transverse uh, symplectic structure and if you have holonomy invariant uh, measures then we have a trace on cyst algebra given again by non-commutative integration theory and uh, we have the integral, uh, we have this trace and one can show that if we take our non-commutative semi-classical symbol so we, the integral is the, this integral exists and this is a replacement of uh, of the, this integral which we have here and now one can immediately check, so just direct computation that uh, actually what does it mean? Uh, what does it mean this trace? How this integration with respect to holonomy invariant measure looks like? We have a family, so as, we, as I explained here, we have really a family of leaf five smoothing operators along the leaves, along each leaf. So we have, say, we have this point, and along each leaf, we have leaf five smoothing operator. And this is just operator given by this kernel. Each leaf is a real line, and we have a parameter here given by tau and uh, so this is uh, just Poisson formula for the heat kernel on the real line which gives us uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, heat kernel and then well we, we, we should have we should take trace if we try to take the trace of this heat operator along the leaf then it, it will give us an infinite answer because we have a, an operator with constant coefficient on, on, a, on the real line, so on a non-compact manifold. So if we take uh, theta tau, tau 1 equals tau 2, we have a constant function. So it's, it's function constant, this is a constant function along the leaf. It's impossible to integrate it along the leaf. And the main idea of this integration, non-commutative integration, goes from the fact so instead of this, we integrate not along the leaf, but on the ambient manifold. 
And uh, for this, uh, what do we do? We just put, uh, take the, the value over the, uh, as a diagonal, so take tau, tau 1 equals tau 2. But we do this at each point of the element manifold. Through each point, we have uh, the leaf going through this point. We take, uh, and if we do this at each point, we get a well-defined function, which is really very nice in this case, on the ambient manifold. And now, instead of integrating this function along the leaves, we just integrate the function on the ambient manifold, and we get a, an, uh, we get a, a, a finite number, which is precisely this uh, trace with respect to holonomy invariant measure. And we can check uh, just uh, that this gives us uh, the answer. Yes, so in your Hitchian formula, you have an extra factor exponential of minus P2 squared P. Where does come from? Because I have uh, some constant term coming from his. Yeah, yes, this depends on P, yes, so, yeah, yeah. That's, like here again, in this formula, I have this also extra term, so I, if I put here, I have here additional term. And, uh, okay, and then you compute and check that we have such a formula with this uh, integration and this non-commutative symbol. The same holds for, in the case then, uh, we have alpha rational. And you remember in that case we have some sum over z. And uh, one can see why do we have such a, why we have such a sum here. Because in this case, when alpha is rational, each leaf is a circle. And when, uh, when we have this, this so, uh, so, uh, so if we restrict our principal symbol to the circle, uh, this, to the circle, we get the operator on the circle and then, uh, okay, for the circle we have, uh, we have to lift this to the real line and we, uh, we get this uh, sum over z. It's usual when we have an operator over a circle, we have to lift it to z invariant operator on the real line to consider the kernel and take uh, the sum over z. And it's usually, it gives us some, uh, some sums already. But uh, it's the point why do we have here a very different formula. And there is also another explanation, maybe I will explain, do this later, why do we have such a sum from, uh, from the point of, uh, yes, so very uh, naive arguments. And this is a so-called non-commutative semi-classical while formula, which, is, which works and uh, which gives us the answer. And actually, this formula works for, 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 so, for any so-called Riemannian foliation. So indeed, we can take any Riemannian foliation and any so-called band-like metric. And let me explain what does it mean and uh, show you another form so, for, for the same formula, maybe in, in a more general setting. So, First of all, well, this is very simple. So, foliation is Riemannian if uh, there exists a band-like metric. What does it mean, band-like? And, uh, okay, there are, so, so suppose we have a Riemannian metric on a foliated bundle. Let me recall this again. Then we have this splitting into leaf ice part and into transverse part. We have this, this splitting of metrics, so leaf vice component, metric tr and transverse component. And now we are looking for transverse component more. And uh, in a foliated chart, we can write, uh, well, so actually 
what do we have? We have all the, we always have f along y direction here, but h might be like something like this, and uh, we have a natural projection of h to the transverse space, which is always isomorphism. But it it's a sort of uh, it might it's not trivial, so there is the, we have a sort of a curvature phenomena here, and uh, so uh, if we have here some one form, differential one forms, then we have some differential forms here, and uh, we can write any Riemannian metric, uh, the transverse part of Riemannian metric in this way. And the metric is called band-like if this transverse part of the metric is constant along the leaf. So you see here it's written only y. There is no only y. There is no x. So if the transverse part of the metric is constant along the leaves, then the metric is called band-like. And in Riemannian geometry. This is well known, and we, which this means that if we have a local metric, we have a metric on the local base, and our transverse part is just the lift of this local metric to, to the H. To, and uh, in, this in this case, if we have such a, fam such a pair of Riemannian metric, this map is called a Riemannian submersion. So one can say that uh, the metric is band-like if in any foliated chart this map is a Riemannian submersion. Equivalently, one can say that uh, the metric is band-like if it's restricted. It's uh, actually the same, but it just uh, I said this uh, in geometrical terms. So this property of independence of H may be called holonomy invariance. It can be expressed in uh, using some co uh, connections. Another interpretation that the metric is bound-like if the distance between this leaf be between the leaves is locally constant. So if you have isometric action of a Lie group, then the foliation is Riemannian if locally free. But if we have hyperbolic behavior, then it's not Riemannian, so it's look like an isometric, but there are Riemannian flow which are not isometric because of this phenomena of H. H might be not, not constant. Okay, and for instance, okay, again, I will not explain uh, the general formula, but I ju just consider the simplest case again, just consider torus, but uh, and uh, Kronecker foliation here, but now let me consider a general metric with general A, B, and C. What should I do in this case? In this case, I have F, H, and then this decomposition written in this way. And then, uh, actually, here the band like me means that uh, this is constant. So the, again, this transverse part <coughs> is constant, so uh, the metric is bound-like if we have this. And uh, okay, and uh, then uh, then I can consider. So then I uh, let me uh, explain another form of my formula. So I should consider leaf phi part. So I re recall you that if uh, we have decomposition of the of the metric, then we have the corresponding decomposition of the operator into leaf into the sum of leaf phi Laplacian and uh, transverse Laplacian and maybe something more. In this case, it's important to remember about uh, leaf phi part and leaf phi part is written this way. So this is again, of course, this is a uh, second order leaf wise elliptic operator, uh, elliptic operator along the leaf. And uh, 
what do we do then? Uh, we just we uh, we just take the spectrum distribution function, or in this case, it's called the integrated density of state som sometimes. So, taking the spectral projection of this operator, so this operator, if you consider this operator on the ambient manifold, it has a continuous the continuous spectrum. And we can, so uh, to describe its spectral theory, we should consider uh, spectral projections and uh, so on. And uh, we just take, uh, well, this foliation again has holonomy invariant measure. And we can consider the corresponding trace and uh, trace on von Neumann algebra of the foliation actually here. And uh, uh, we arrived actually in this formula. So this is the formula. This is another, f another form of the same formula as uh, I explained before. Without this, uh, uh, this is not a vial form, but it's more, it's, it's a simpler formula. And uh, one can see again a sort of sum of uh, like we have here. Yes, here one can see the, so here we have sum, so which means integration along some uh, spectral measure of the operator on the circle and uh, also lambda minus some values, uh, one square and uh, square root and the same formula we see, we see here. Okay, and Okay, here, we, of course, we also have some non-commutative geometry because we have integration, integrated density of states, but uh, it's not so natural like uh, the semi-classical vial formula as I explained you because, yes. Because uh, if you don't know how to prove this, you can write this formula, it, you can explain why it works. But by now, we only know this for Riemannian foliations. Because in that case, we do very simple. We know that we have uh, this, uh, our, oper our operator is the sum of leaf-wise part and uh, transverse part. And, in so in, and now we replace transverse part by something like principal symbol. And this works. But if the foliation is not remaining, it's, it's, we have already some additional terms. And it, it's not clear even how to write this. Well, of, it's not clear how to prove the formula, but it's not clear even how to write the formula. Because now you have to play, even if you don't have a foliation, you have to play with, uh, yeah, like we saw a sort of vile, vile calculus. We have to play with non-commuted va uh, variables, but if you have a foliation, then we, we have more complicated structure. And uh, so this is the main question. In the, what, what kind of formula we can get for, a for an arbitrary foliation? And since we don't know a general answer, we can try some examples. Okay, let me just explain you two examples. So first, uh, consider, let's consider three-dimensional Heisenberg group given by the, well, it's well known, it consists of these matrices. So it's a Lie al the Lie algebra of this group. Now I want to consider foliation here. So first of all, I consider a discrete, uniform discrete subgroup of this Heisenberg group, say just taking all all entries uh, uh, integer. And uh, I consider so-called Riemannian Heisenberg manifold, which is just given by this quotient. And I consider just left invariant metric. Because I just looking for example, I just uh, uh, assume that the metric is the identity at the identity. So the metric just is the standard metric at the identity. Okay, so this is a Riemannian, Riemannian manifold. Then we take just a one-dimensional foliation given by this uh, left invariant vector field. 
Well, by some reason, so you know here we have center, so it's not important, but here we have just one and alpha, and we will play with this. So the orbit of v this vector field defines some one-dimensional foliation, which is not Riemannian. And, uh, okay, it's also quite known. Then we can see the, so this is the, the formula for, for our metric. And here is the operator we have. And now again we put, uh, we consider adiabatic limit, so it's a very explicit example. We put, again, this is Levi's part and this is transverse part. What do we get in this case? And this is the answer. Again, I want to address with the leading term. So, well, this can be done using representation theory or drum, some explicit computations. For the, so it's, it's well known. There are many computations for the Heisenberg group. And uh, again, we, we can ask if our semi-classical value formula works in this case. And it, it turns out, yes, it works. So again, you can consider this just, you can play with the same thing. So just replacing by this transverse part by, sa by some cotangent variables, consider again a sort of uh, a, a Levi's elliptic operator on this, on the lifted foliation. Uh, we g again have, we always have a uh, uh, holonomy invariant volume form on this lifted foliation because it's related with cotangent bundle with little will measure. And, uh, and here we see this, uh, one can check again that it works, so we get this formula. We have here square because it's clear that the uh, dimension of the leaf space in this case two. We have co-dimension two foliation, so we have square here. You don't have extra terms. Sorry? You don't have extra terms. No. I have a natural expression for the transverse part of the symbol just. Okay, let's take another example. So-called soul group. In this case, we consider the group which consists of such kind of such mat matrices. And uh, again, Lie group. So here, the structure of uniform lattices is, small, is a bit more complicated. And it's written here, so it's described in terms of hyperbolic SL to Z matrices uh, and uh, in the, so there is certain construction of, a di of the discrete subgroup of this uh, of this uh, Lie group which is co-compact and discrete so we again have a compact uh, compact Riemannian manifold. We again take a uh, so-called sole manifold. We again take uh, an invariant matrix and uh, just for simplicity assume that this is, uh, it is an identity because we're just looking for example. And uh, again take this vector field, one alpha. So these are leaves of this foliation. And this is an operator we have actually. Again we have three dimensional space but uh, such uh, the operator with uh, exponential coefficients. Again, so we take uh, here epsilon, small parameter. We have one dimensional foliation, co-dimension two. So we have two de derivatives in these directions. And it, one can show then that when alpha equals zero, zero, it's really a Riemannian foliation. But when alpha is not zero, it's really, it's really it looks like as, uh, it's related with a soul group, but it's also 
related with some stable or unstable foliations for, for certain anosov flows. Okay, and uh, this is, uh, it turns out that in this case the formula, uh, the formulas looks, look different in if alpha equals zero and uh, not zero. So here we just have a Riemannian foliation case, constant is different and it turns out it turns out that in this case we don't have such a viral formula in our naive setting. And so, to, uh, yes, even if, even if we don't know how to prove such formulas, it would be interesting to understand what happens so we have a sort of uh, quantization or we sort of pseudo-differential calculus where really the phase space is non-commutative and already the, al the algebra of symbols is non-commutative. So we have a sort of uh, semi-classical quantization of non-commutative algebra and uh, even if we want just to know how to write the formula, we have to quantize somehow this algebra and this is quite interesting and open question because we just take a naive operator, just Schrodinger <coughs> operator where we know how to do just replacing second derivative with chi squared and nothing more. And uh, Sorry? Yeah, so if you don't have, uh, if you don't have, if you don't have H, if you're just looking for, uh, for leaf space, then one can construct such a calculus. It's related with so-called quasi-isotropic calculus of Gimin and Sternberg. It's a particular example, yes, and uh, I just, uh, I have written this in details, uh, this calculus, so it's really, it's because it's really very natural from the geometrical points of view, it looks like a, like a cross product of the pseudo differential calculus on the local base by foliation or by an equivalence relation given by foliation. And uh, yes, but uh, for the semi-classical calculus, we know that even for on a compact manifold, it's uh, a complicated uh, question. So in quantum physics, uh, it's well known in Rn. But uh, if you do this on a manifold, because you see that uh, semi-classical, so for if you don't have semi-classical parameter, you just play with the principal symbol, which is well known, defi it's defined on the cotangent bundle. But, and it's invariantly defined. But if you play with, uh, with H, then you have to play with complete symbol, which is not invariantly defined, and uh, one can use uh, different construction how to do this. And in, phys in quantum physics, it was open question for a long time, so it's related with so-called Gutzwiller trace formula, which is first proved in the paper by Paul and Uribe in 1995. And uh, it's uh, already on a manifold, it's quite complicated question. But, and also, if you play with the spectral theory, uh, so we have a pseudo differential calculus with such a non commutative algebra as a, at the symbol level we can ask, we can ask for, for for different question on spectral, spectral theory say it's very popular uh, pe popular in uh, quantum now say quantum chaos quantum ergodicity and also one can ask similar question for adiabatic limits and then you have to play with quantum ergodicity as a level of non-commutative geometry. It's very, it's quite complicated but if you just looking for, from the mathematical point of view, why not? Also, well, quantum entropy. 
And another point that I am not, I just discuss a very simple spectral asymptotics just for the uh, for this function. So uh, I don't discuss asymptotics say for retain, for for more complicated spectral invariants like eta invariant or uh, so on. And uh, it's also open question. I should also. Uh, I, I could also only mention that uh, in this case we also have a certain result about uh, spectral sequences, uh, about Hodge theory for Riemannian foliations, which is which are generalization of Matteo and Melrose results on Hodge theory and the relations with the diabatic limits and uh, so-called. Uh, Hodge theoretic description of spectral sequence for foliations or for vibrations. And uh, to, before to finish, let me just uh, say something different uh, about uh, number theory. As I saw that, as I told you in the beginning, re really our spectral problems are related with this problem. So we take this, uh, the disk, take certain direction, take the orthogonal complement, and now just fix here. So we have no scaling in this direction, and we have scaling with this factor in transverse direction. So. What's about the number of integer points? And uh, as I explained to you, so this, this, the asymptotic formula is related somehow with the non-commutative file formula. So these problems have some non-commutative flavor. And, uh, but it's, well, but the general formula is, so just in this setting, so suppose you consider Rn and you consider two spaces, so F and H, like I explained, just in a very general setting of, or you, we just can consider also the setting of finite dimensional Euclidean space and arbitrary lattice. So we take this transformation as I explained, so X when X belongs to F, and uh, this is uh, x belongs to h. And I just looking for the number of integer points in this uh, uh, stretch domain. And uh, I am interested in the asymptotic behavior of this. And uh, the formula, to explain the formula, I have to introduce, so I have to divide somehow so I have, uh, as you saw already, the formula looks different if uh, the slope is rational and irrational. So I have to divide, uh, distinguish somehow rational direction from irrational. And to do this, I introduce such a gamma, which is just intersection of our lattice with F. I consider V just the, so if, uh, Alpha, in our example, if alpha is irrational, then gamma is trivial, and V also is trivial. But if alpha is rational, then gamma coincide, uh, then gamma is intersection of, uh, so integer points which are here, and F coincide with V. And, uh, why do we have sums here? Because we have a sort of, uh, so, suppose alpha is, uh, alpha is rational. Then it turns out that one can, t one should we should take all integer point on this line. And we should take so-called dual lattice to this. And it turns out that if, it, if I take real lines which are orthogonal to our F passing through these uh, dual points, like I explained here, so this is dual lattice, then all integer point, all integer points 
uh, lie on these uh, one-dimensional lines. This is the reason why we don't, we don't have such a mixing in this case. So we don't have uh, two-dimensional volume. We just have one-dimensional volume. And uh, after this, uh, the formula looks very natural. So we have the sum, asymptotically, we have the sum of uh, volumes of this n minus r dimensional volumes of these intersections over the points of our uh, dual lattice. And this, this holds very general, so suppose here we have, so intersection should, ha should be Jordan measurable, so it's a very general formula. And then one should also study the remainder estimates in this formula, and in depend it depends already on the boundary, and I, I will not talk about this, but as I said, uh, yes, it, first of all, this is not a volume, it's a sum of volumes, it's a discrete volume. And in some sense, it's related with non-commutative geometry, as maybe I convinced you. And uh, if we apply this formula for the torus, for, for the, for the adiab one can apply the formula for the adiabatic limit, so there is a general relation between the spectral distribution function or for the Laplace operator on the torus and the number of integer points in some domain uh, and uh, so for, 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 for the ball and then we get the, the general formula which holds for any uh, Kronecker foliation, for any linear foliation on any, on the torus, on a torus of any dimension. And uh, okay, and I have no time so let me Stop here. Thank you very much. No, I don't think, I, I, th no, I think it's unimodular. Yeah. I think so.